Do not determine my future destination because of my present location. Many of you have been judged because of the family in which you are born. Many of you have been ruled out. You've been marked out that you'll never succeed in life because of the location you find yourself. I may be down now, but don't rule me out because very soon I will bounce back. 2009 has been a tough year for you. You've been laughed at, provoked, ridiculed. But today the Lord wants to change your ridicule into a miracle. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1, that David declared, Is there anyone left in the house of Saul? that I may show him kindness because of his father, Jonathan. We all know the story how Saul was seeking the life of David. But in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the pain, yet still, Jonathan, the son of Saul, made a covenant with David. And David was a covenant keeper. David and the God that we are serving is a covenant keeping God. He will never leave you nor forsake you. My Bible declares that he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Our God is still alive. People have looked at your location because of what you are today. They have judged you. They have ruled you that you will not surmount to anything. But I've come to announce to you that our God is a mighty God. So the Bible says in the book of 2 Samuel 9, after David has become the next king of Israel, he occupied the throne. The Bible says he, he conquered the army of Saul. He conquered and he, he was in charge of every area, the property, everything that belongs to Saul. But he remembered the covenant that he made with Jonathan. And he said, bring me somebody that is left in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness because of his father Jonathan. And the Bible said there was a man by the name of Mephibosheth. This man was a cripple. He was not born a cripple. But we were told according to scriptures that the woman that was taking care of this man Mephibosheth while running, uh, trying to hide from the armies of David, he, she dropped the young man. And because she dropped the young man and the young man fell down, he became a cripple. And the Bible says his name Mephibosheth means shame. Mephibosheth means something discouraging, something deplorable. He left and he went into the land called Ludaba, into the valley of Ludaba. Ludaba is a place of barrenness. Ludaba is a place of frustration. Ludaba is a place of lack. The Bible says, is there anyone left in the house of Jonathan, in the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for the sake of his father Jonathan? We are told according to scripture, they determine his purpose. They thought that this man is done. He is good for nothing. How many times have you not been ruled out in your family? You are the eldest in your family, but because you are poor, so many things you hear them outside. You have been ruled out. You've been counted out that you'll never surmount anything. But I want to declare to you that is watching me, if God be for you, who can be against you? When the Lord has lifted you up, who is the devil to put you down? When the Lord is by your side, the devil cannot stand before you. And the Bible says this man went to Ludaba, a place of barrenness, a place of lust, a place of stagnation. Don't count yourself out. Let them say what they want to say about you, but God is still looking out for you because of the covenant that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said, I will bless you because of Abraham. I will bless you and make you a father of multitude. And the Bible says, David said, and Ziba came, the commander, the servant that was taken care of Mephibosheth. He said, yes, there is a man left in the house of Saul, the grandson. His name is Mephibosheth. And David said, bring him up to me. But look at the story. This man, because of his location, he looked down upon himself. Please, I want to encourage you. Woman, it doesn't mean because of a disappointment in your life, you need to rule yourself out. It doesn't mean because a man or a woman walked out of your life, that's the end of your life. I want you to know that God is preparing you for victory. God is preparing you for the supernatural. This world is not our home. 
The Bible says the things of this world, they are temporal. But those in heaven, they are from everlasting to everlasting. And the Bible says they brought Mephibosheth in the court of David. He was giving everything. He was dressed. The man even decided, he was even provoking himself. He said, look at a dead dog like me for me to be invited into the king's palace. I don't care your condition. I don't care the location in which you find yourself now. If your time has come for God to lift you up, God will bring you in the presence of kings. You will dine with people. I have been ruled out before. I have been spoken against before. But guess what? It was from that dungeon that the Lord has lifted me up, that the Lord has brought me to a place of rejoicing, and the enemy cannot steal that joy from me. And I always say to the devil, do not determine my future destination because of my present location. You don't know what the future holds for me. Don't rule me out. Be careful what you say now. On one day, you will regret because of the words you've uttered against me. And friends, I want you to know that God is in the business of making people, of transforming life. If you want to be blessed, come to Christ this world ministry, the World Explosion Center, Springfield, Virginia. You can reach me on 703-472-48. For 4837. May God bless you and may the peace of God continue to be your portion. I want you to bow your head for a word of prayer. I'm here in the studios of Front Page Studio in Silver Springs, Maryland. With me is a unique gentleman, the Reverend Jibrila Sapunka Bangura, President, Founder, and Senior Pastor of Crisis Lord Ministries both in Virginia and Maryland. But there's something unique about Reverend Bangura. Reverend Bangura actually was born a Muslim. His father is a sheikh. He went to Muslim institutions. He called for prayer in the mosque. And then all of a sudden, his life changed from just a greetings from a friend. We are here to hear from Reverend Bangura himself. What happened in his life? Why did he become a Christian? And since he became a Christian, where has that journey led him to being a pastor and a carrier of God's word to a congregation that is hungry for the spirit of the Lord in their lives? Welcome, Reverend Bangura. 